What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. We got a pretty interesting match, so I'm going to go ahead and record it. We have Chaos Spirit Man, no, Chaos Sprite Man, sorry, 1502 versus Willard 18, or excuse me, Willard 89, 16, 19. This is classic Medoche versus S9. I guess I can't say classic. This match I just started this uh, format. And Willard is one of the last people playing Medoches on DN. So um, I'm actually, I'm sort of contemplating. I don't want to play any of the big three. And I'm kind of torn between uh, trying to pick up Medoche or Prophecy. I feel like each deck can do something unfair. I'll talk about that later. All right, so to backtrack, Willard opened up with Magellan, which I believe got Hooters. No, no, no. Magellan got hit with Breakthrough Skill. He then played that. Willard went second, by the way. Um, both player has already exhausted their warning. Uh, Spriteman used his on a card card D, which Willard main decks. And uh, Willard used his, obviously, right there on the Gunman. All right. So, oh, wow. Nice counter. Uh, you see that he tries to go Angeli. And Chaos Spriteman tries to fire back with Emptiness. Willard goes Trap Stun, which means... Pretty much we have to go ham. And honestly, the, the, the great thing is uh, what, what Willard could actually do is, um, since Vanity's Emptiness won't trigger if anything is destroyed, uh, unless Chaos Spriteman runs Honest, and you see that you know he's pretty much going nuts right now playing Ticket, you can see that he can easily go for Queen Tiramisu. He can spin back both cards, and then he can attack, attack. Actually, it wouldn't even matter. Um... Because he has two monsters. I guess, yeah, I guess Honest would save him, but either way. And you see that he adds both of those guys back to his hand. Okay. Does she detach two at once? I thought she only detached one material. Okay, I'm not sure how she detached both. Maybe. Oh, there it is. Okay. So um, the material went back on. I was like, I thought she only detached one and she could use her effect twice. So you see he sends Altier back to the um back to the deck and a monster and Chaos Frightman says I've had enough. And what I was gonna say about that play is and why it was so advantageous for uh Willard was um the Vanity's emptiness is the card you wanted to leave up because basically not only was Willard able to get his Terramasu on field, she's sitting at what, twenty seven hundred because of Chateau, but then he has Hooters on board. Hooters is two thousand and then you basically leave your opponent in a position where they can't special summon. I mean, he's sitting on Altier in his hand, but what's it going to do when Vanity's Emptiness is locking you down? You can't do anything. So I'm kind of having this internal debate on if I should try and pick up Prophecy or Madoche. I feel like they both do one really good thing that's good against the meta, um, mainly just because... Uh, Madoche has Queen Tiramisu, and she doesn't target, so that's always good. And then she sends shit back to the deck, which means against Shadows and against Burning Abyss, you don't have to worry about killing them. You just send them back to the deck, and the opponent doesn't, they don't get anything out of it. So she's a good answer to both of them. And then on Prophecy side, you have Spellbook of Fate, and Spellbook of Fate gives no fucks about those decks either. Those decks want to play against decks that all they can do is just attack. Like, even... You know, even this deck, even S Knights, I mean, they don't really have ways of killing face down monsters if your opponent just sets them. Like, they have to pretty much battle, you know, or they have to use destruction effects like, uh, you know, Diamond, Dire Wolf, Delta Rose, stuff like that. So you see the Rota. He goes Deneb, um, Altier. I believe he had it, Altier. I'm just going to guess he had Altier. Um, he dualities. It looks like he duality for an MST. So he does have his six cards. If I'm Madoche, I feel much better going second, uh, mainly because Willard plays Karkardi, so uh, like, let's just say hypothetically, he didn't open up with a power play. He could go Karkardi, and then he could summon, right? And he could just set a couple of defensive cards, and then what's Chaos, I mean, Chaos Brightman can't use his, uh, his Altier, you know what I mean? Because he still has his Deneb on board, so it's like, he, he, he can't really take that much damage. That's what I'm getting at. Like against S Knights, you can kind of just leave Deneb on field, not have to worry about attacking it, and then your opponent can't get the they can't get the Altier Deneb train started, and you're looking at only taking about I don't know, uh, fifteen hundred. And then if they do something like this, like Unu, then you can like torrential them. You get what I'm saying? Like you can fire back with a torrential tribute. Although 
I don't like to retribute this format. I think it's just awful because Burning Abyss and Shadow is just, they don't care at all about that card. Alright, so you see Unu comes down. He uses his Foolish Effect on Deneb. And also, the prices of Madoche have like really came down. I mean, wasn't Angeli 40 bucks at the height? And now she's 16, which means I can probably go on eBay and get them for 13, 14 maybe. So, anyways, um, you see that Magdalene gets ran over. She tags back out. I feel like this card right here, Ticket, <laughs> this shit is like, I think it's, it's, it's like it, when, when, when somebody plays that card, it's like supply spot for me, man. Like, I, I feel like I got to get that shit off the field immediately because if they resolve it more than once, I'm just going to lose. Unless you have Vanity's Emptiness and you can't do anything about it. Now you see Chaos Sprite Men dualities for a soul charge, which means it's it's a good it, it's a good card to get in any situation. The problem is he couldn't special summon. You knew he just wanted even if nothing else, just Diamond Dower Wolf and pop a back row. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. He has soul charge to get his monsters back. So you see that he is going for Angeli. With only one back row, I guess you pretty much go ham now. Unless your opponent has Alpha Nova. That card is so fucking scary. Oh my god. It is just so scary because you just can't do anything about it. It's like Wiretap or Bust. And I'm not crazy about Wiretap right now. Like, I almost feel like I'd rather play MST just because of Annie's Emptiness. You see Who Cakes Effect's going to activate for Mess and Gelato. Pretty obvious there. He goes for Chateau. And here's the crazy thing. He can, he can totally attack over both monsters. So he may have Altier and everything, but um, he could lose his field completely. Now, obviously, Chaos Frightman is still in a good position. He has Altier to potentially go, I don't know, like Exiton Knight or something. Nah, you know what? You don't see a lot of players do that just because when they go Altier, they they, they summon um, Deneb a lot of times, which means... I guess technically he would go plus, or you could just not trigger Deneb's effect and then soul charge everything back. That'd be three monsters. Well, I guess two because one of the monsters would still be as a material. <clears throat> All right, so those are some po some possible plays that he can go for. Um, he just has to keep in mind he can only activate those effects once per turn. The Deneb and the Altier. We see the end phase call of the Haunted. Probably for... Okay, he goes for Deneb. Oh, Vanity's Emptiness. That was clutch. <clears throat> Willard plays Vanity's Emptiness in the main. I've, I've seen them duel a couple of times. Um, as sad as it is, I feel like every... Oh, wow. And just the, the quick 2-0. I mean, we knew that... I didn't think that he would just scoop. We knew that Chaos Sprightman had two cards in hand that would be potentially dead. Um... The obviously the soul charge was dead, and then the Altier was dead too. So I thought maybe his other two cards would get him through. Um, I kind of feel like every deck except Prophecy should run Vanny's Emptiness because Prophecy can't maintain it because their their board usually consists of Blue Boy, and he's too small to protect. Usually after after like Fade or D Prison or something something like that. So thank you guys for watching. As always, uh, apparently Madoche still getting it done.